Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. One year ago in February, Texas had a very bad cold snap. The wind stopped blowing and their wind turbines froze up. For a long time, the state of Texas had been very focused on wind power and hadn't maintained their fossil fuel infrastructure properly. So when the cold weather came, the state wasn't prepared. The grid shut down and hundreds of people froze to death. And this week, Texas is expecting a similar cold weather event. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas predicted that the electrical demand this week could be near the demand seen last year. But it wasn't always cold like this in Texas during February. On this date in 1911, it was 93 degrees in Fort Worth, Texas, and the average temperature around the state was just under 90. 19 states were over 70 degrees Fahrenheit that day, and 11 states were over 80 degrees. Texas and Oklahoma both reached 93 degrees. That was just the first heat wave of 1911. During May 1911, there was another unprecedented heat wave in the United States. People in the United States were dying from the heat during May 1911, and temperatures in New England exceeded 100 degrees. Then came another heat wave in July. July 4, 1911 was the hottest on record in the United States. Every state was over 90 degrees, and much of the eastern U.S. was over 100 degrees. According to the Boston Globe, temperatures in Maine reached 112 degrees, and temperatures in New Hampshire reached 110. The heat wave in New England lasted for 11 days and killed thousands of people. Many people committed suicide to escape the heat. In 1911, people didn't have fossil fuel-powered air conditioning to keep them alive and sane. But the heat wave wasn't confined to the United States and was, in fact, even worse in Europe. More than 40,000 people died in Paris during a 70-day-long heat wave from July to September 1911. People were dying in London where temperatures reached 100 degrees, and more than 1,000 people died in Germany. And at the same time, they were having a record winter heat wave in Australia. Both Australia and the United States had historic winter heat waves during 1911. Additionally, the world record rainfall of two and a half inches in five minutes occurred in 1911 in Panama. One might expect that climate scientists would be interested in understanding the heat of 1911. But instead of trying to understand it, NASA climate scientists have chosen to simply erase the heat of 1911. They show 1911 as being one of the coldest years on record. This provides a much better story for energy propagandists like Lisa Jackson and Lauren Jerome. They say that climate change is caused by humans and apparently it's going to make everybody's faces disappear. They say the Northeast will see the highest temperature increase in the contiguous country. The region is also projected to see the highest rise in fatalities due to heat. Thousands of people died from the heat in the Northeast during 1911, but very few people do anymore. One reason is because heat waves aren't as bad as they were in 1911, but the main reason is that we now have fossil fuel powered air conditioning to keep people alive. Climate alarmists want to take the reliable supply of energy away and thus fulfill their own prophecy of more deaths. They also say that the northeastern United States has the highest rising sea levels in the country. This doesn't make any sense, and it also isn't true. This animation cycles through all of the government tide gauges in the northeastern United States. All of the tide gauges in the northeastern U.S. are at or below the lowest sea level rise scenario proposed by climate scientists. According to climate modelers, sea level was supposed to be accelerating very quickly, but it simply isn't happening. The public is being misinformed by some very persistent liars. The same misinformation gets repeated over and over again in order to brainwash people into giving up the reliable supply of energy which they depend on for their survival. Wind turbines, power plants, and faceless people have nothing to do with climate. It's an association just as ridiculous as carrying a rabbit's foot in your pocket because you think it will bring you good luck. Texas spent several decades becoming very dependent on unreliable wind power. We'll find out this week if they made any progress since last year's disaster. Toto wonders why so many people rely on other people's ridiculous opinions rather than doing their own thinking. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.